Hey everyone, on Les Stroud's Wild Harvest, I do get the opportunity to show you some tips and some techniques for gathering wild edibles. This is not the be all and end all for what you need to know to gather from the wilderness or do local foraging. There are risks associated, including getting bitten by mosquitoes. The only way to do this properly is to read your books, go online, but most importantly, to seek out a local expert. You will find someone in your area, I guarantee, that is passionate about wild edible plants and let them show you the way to enjoying and partaking of the wild harvest. I think sometimes that gathering from the wild, wild edible plants seems a little bit mystical, out of reach. Let's take something simple, maple syrup. Everybody knows maple syrup. It's ubiquitous. You see it in all the stores. What if instead you could enjoy that syrup bounty of your own accord? What if you could just take one tree, one bucket, one day, and gather and make your own maple syrup bounty, enough for your family to have it on their pancakes the next morning? It's just that sometimes demystifying connection to nature through gathering wild edible plants well that's the first step into the mystical world of the wild harvest Yeah, so I think we're gonna end up with three foraged ingredients. You know that we're going to be dealing with the maple trees right. and the maple syrup. But I've also hinted to you that we can utilize just the sap itself, right? So in that way, we get kind of like two different ingredients out of this one bit of foraging. I have still got a few buckets up. Here's what I want you to do. Taste the sap. But I've never done that before. Okay, well, so, this is your chance. Yeah. Those of us who tap trees and make syrup, we can't not do it, because it's delicious. So uh, just take the bucket, have a sip. Okay, it's, yeah. it's kind of like a sweet water. So go find a bucket and enjoy. Okay. This is a first for me. I like sweet water. There's not a lot to it, but I have an idea how to use this. Well, a couple of pointers. South side of the tree. And you just think about where the sun is in the sky, where it arcs around, and you can kind of imagine it on the tree. So sun's over here, arcs around the sky. Where does the sun hit this tree? Take away some of the bark. Right about here. And I'm going to angle it so it goes just slightly up, a bit of an angle. Now, I don't think the sap is going to be dripping right this moment. Weather's been changing a lot. Not bad, a little touch more. Kind of go by feel. And of course, if I start drilling into the tree and it's on a day when the sap is truly running, it'll just start pouring out. In fact, sometimes within the first four seconds of turning the drill, the sap starts oozing out of the hole. It's a beautiful thing to see, actually. All right. That should do. There we go. That's a beautiful hole. That's it. On goes the bucket. Beautiful. At some point soon, I should hear drip, drip, drip. And that's a beautiful sound. 
there are days when it actually looks like they're all little faucets. It pours out so quickly. And other days, you kind of, you go back and, uh, it's been a few hours and there's only a quarter inch more sap. So it changes all the time. And that's the magic of gathering maple sap. You have to kind of, if you pardon the pun, go with the flow. I'll leave you with that. In a band wrapping around the planet through most temperate forests, there are around 132 species of maple. And even though they don't all produce sugar-filled sap, most of the species in North America do. The sugar maple, of course, is the king of the sap producing maples. You know, and I find that always it's the same sort of sensation when I sit in a forest. I have a chance to smell, acknowledge, you know, how, how aromatically pleasing it is. But in this case, it's the time of year that I'm not used to. I'm, I'm not out in this part of the world that often. And to, to look at trees that are growing without their leaves is fascinating. And looking around, it's like I, I see new life coming out of the leaves. Today, there's, there's something different in the air, however. I smell smoke, and I, I smell candy. It's kind of getting me excited and a little bit hungry. Look at all this beautiful sap. What I want the sap to be doing is to be on a slow boil like this one right here. OK. That is ideal, a nice, slow rumble boil. So to get enough sap for this, I had my friend Bushman Bob gather sap. Now, he was here during the season. I couldn't get here on time. That's why I'm only getting the last of the season. Mother Nature's golden nectar. Try this. Oh, I have to do this for you. Yeah, this is a really nice thing to do, actually. That's nice. I can smell the maple. Mm. It's like sweetened maple tea. This is going to be good. Oh, it's delicious. It's time, Paul. It's time. So, yeah, doesn't that smell great? It does. That's when you know you're making maple syrup right there. Oh, yeah. Look at that amber color. Liquid gold. Oh, beautiful. I love it when it starts to just get that syrupy look to it. That's beautiful. OK, you want to check out all our ingredients? Yep. We still got one more from my pantry. It's an old favorite of yours. OK. I'm intrigued. Yeah, well, I've told, I told you already. Milkweed is coming back to you again. This is a wonderful little bounty of immature milkweed pods. So last summer, after you and I had done some gathering and some cooking together, the milkweed was changing its stages. So I went out to yet another milkweed area. I was very judicious in my harvesting. I gathered only one of these from every plant. And these are baby milkweed pods. It's really clean. Yeah. Like, the, the liquid has that sort of raw broccoli flavor. Yeah. I am going to head back and get a little one burner stove that I can work this on tomorrow. In the meantime, enjoy your ingredients, and you can daydream on what you might want to do with them all. This is the one I'm really excited about. When I tasted the maple sap, first thing I thought, to celebrate that tree, use it as a base for a brine. For example, pastrami would be one of those cuts of meats that would be cured in brine. Brines are easy. Usually, salt, sugar, liquid. In this case, we've got salt and the maple sap. Should be just about right. OK, that should do it. Now into the brine.
Paul, check this out. So I brought up my old camp stove. This has been on a thousand canoe trips with me. And it has kept me warm and dry and cooked my food for many, many years. So I thought, you know what? This is a nice controlled fire. I'm just going to continue to reduce the sap down to syrup over this little wood stove right here. Les, can I have a taste of that? It's not ready yet. It's still pretty thin, still pretty watery. Oh, that's OK. I need some sugar for uh, an idea I have. All right. Oh, Les, that's great. It's good. Oh, that's going to work perfectly for what I need. Beautiful. I've got some brie here. And this is something that I did at the restaurant a lot over the past 20 years. Yeah, the ultimate is uh, the brie melted with maple syrup. So I'm going to take some of this, and I'm going to kind of gently baste the brie with it. And then my hope is, because I'm cooking in cast iron, it's going to reduce and turn into a syrup all on its own. Yeah, that's coming along really well. Some black and pink peppercorn. And lastly, just a little bit of salt. This is a chance for me to play with the young milkweed pods. The flavor that they have on their own is so delicious. I think it's going to work perfectly with the brie and the maple syrup. There we go. Look at that. All right, snack time. Here you go. Good. Thank you. Ooh, yeah. All right, well, tell me what it is I'm going to eat, and then you can carry on with your cooking. It is brie that's been basted with the not maple syrup, okay. but now it is almost like maple candy. Oh, oh, yeah, that looks good. It's a good one. Good snack. Good. Thanks, buddy. This is amazing. What do you think of the pods? You know the pods, you know what they're adding? They're adding texture. And I'll be honest, these milkweed pods with just your syrup covering on their own would have been an amazing little treat. Oh, good to know. Without the bread, without yeah. the brie. So I know what you're doing here. This is a classic brie treat, but I'm saying on their own, a total, total win. Ah, oh, it's delicious. I'm making a, a sauce out of purple top turnip and maple syrup to go with the boar that I brined last night. I've got an idea where it's kind of a play on a honey mustard, except this will be a maple mustard sauce to tie the boar, the carrots, and the sauce all into this maple-themed entree. How's the maple syrup clarification process coming? We're ready soon. Paul, can you please bring the strainer? Yeah. All right, let's go. Let's do this. Liquid gold, my friend, liquid gold. So you're just shy of three cups. There we go. Well, your timing's perfect because I need it right now. I'm making a quick little maple sauce to go with all the wonderful grilled items I have on the go. Maple syrup. Salt. That works really well. I'm just mashing up turnip. Make sure it's soft enough that when I add the maple syrup, it will have a smooth texture on the palate. And now some maple syrup. Back on the heat. Time to cook the boar. I'm just going to move these to the lower deck where the heat's a little more gentle.
Those are great. Perfect. All set for me, Paul? Yes, sir. Your timing is impeccable. What you got for me? This is the story of, of maple. This entire meal is layers of maple flavor. There you go. Oh, ho, ho. that looks beautiful. Wow. I love it when I'm surprised. How do I eat this? All, all together, mush it in, or individually? I would definitely have the milkweed pods okay. as a bite. And they're such gems. On their own? Yeah, have one on their own. And then go over to the to the boar. So what you have, carrots, milkweed pods, purple top turnip, which was cooked and simmered in maple syrup, a maple syrup vinaigrette, and the boar tenderloin was brined in maple sap. OK, all right, so this is maple all around. Mm. Mm. I was worried it was going to have nothing but pork flavor, and maybe the maple would be lost. But as I chew it, as it goes through my taste buds, the boar did not win out at all. Your maple sauce and dressing, all of that together, has completely won out, and it's got a sweetness to it. You know, sometimes meat can be sweet. In this case, the sweetness in this boar has been enhanced by the maple syrup infusion that you've got going on here. I've also got a flavor with this milkweed pod I haven't had before. And isn't that one of the best things? Every time we discover new wild edible plants, like, well, it's kind of like parsnip. It's kind of like spinach. It's like, no, it's its its own thing. Clean fork, Kevin. You got to try this. Yeah? Isn't that the coolest thing? What is that? I know. Edamame, green bean, mm -hmm. broccoli, a hint of Brussels sprout. Mm -hmm. But it's its own thing. It's the best when it's its own flavor and you're not trying to make it taste like anything else. So that was, this is, okay, Paul, I'm sorry, but you did it, man. This is a knockout of the park. I love this. When you're making something with a wild edible like this, you're nailing it so often now and not losing the wild flavor. Sometimes it is about the ingredients. So I've got an idea, which is a play on a maple cheesecake. It's not going to be baked. It's going to be poached. And right now, it's a little chilly outside, so my cheese is actually hard. So I'm just going to warm it up, melt it, and then add some eggs. Perfect. So the Bain Marie essentially is a hot water bath used for either poaching or steaming. The reason I've got the plastic on top is to help keep things out, debris out. But as it's cooking, I want the moisture to stay in. There we go. The way to tell that this dessert is done is by gently tilting it side to side and just making sure that it's set if it's a little liquidy in the inside, it's got to cook a tad bit longer. In this case, it's perfect. Now for the final maple syrup moment, some agar, agar powder. Now I just have to bring that to a boil. Some walnuts. Dry it up with some oats. Oh, that's perfect. Now 
we're just waiting for that to boil. Man, it's amazing the heat that comes off that. Just that one move right there. It's boiling. Look at this. It's happening. Here we go. It's happening now. All right, that's it. So this is kind of resembling maple taffy. It's a maple walnut crunch. And it's ready to eat. Oh, this looks good. There you go, Ooh. the finale. Tell me what I'm looking at. It's mimicked maple taffy on top of a maple cheesecake with a maple walnut crunch. Oh, all at once, I suppose, eh? Dig in. Well, it looks fantastic. It's all there. The texture, the balance, and it's definitely maple. There's no question about it. What inspired this? The one thing I've always wanted to do was make maple taffy, but the snow's gone. Mm -hmm. So I, I wanted to kind of mimic that experience. Oh. So I reduced the maple syrup, and I thickened it with agar agar, which is a seaweed-based powder. Oh, my gosh. As you know, I'm a sweet nut. I love my desserts. And I'm critical on desserts, especially anything with the words cheesecake in it. As I like to say, I'm a cheesecake snob. So you can't pass something by me and call it cheesecake and have it not hit the mark. Do you like it? I do like it. Yeah? Would you change anything if you had to do it yeah. again? Would you change I vamp up the maple. Ask and ye shall receive. Cheers. That's it. And look at this. See, it's still a touch thin, but oh. Yeah, this is just going to work so well. Mmm. <laughs> that last touch of the maple syrup. That was a touch of magic. This is when I feel really, really spoiled, my friend. Now, was this easy for Chef Paul, working with maple syrup in the kitchen? You've done it a thousand times before. Well, kind of, yeah. That's the whole point. It doesn't have to be complicated or difficult. From start to finish, tree, to bucket to your stovetop, seven, eight, maybe nine hours. And then there you are with your own wild crafted maple syrup pouring it over a pancake. And you know what? The process does not remove the mystical nature of gathering from the wild. If anything, you begin to understand the mystery of it all. The mystery of the connection from tree to tree to tree to you. And there you are again, celebrating the maple tree with the sweetest of the wild harvest. If you'd like to continue the wild harvest with me and Chef Paul Rogalski, then please check out our website at wildharvestfilms.com where we have recipes and foraging tips along with deleted scenes and outtakes from the making of Les Stroud's Wild Harvest. Directly inspired by the series, Chef Paul and expert forager Les Stroud bring you the Wild Harvest Season 2 recipe book. Highlighting all of Paul's dishes and complete with behind-the-scenes stories, it is available for $29.99. In addition, a DVD of this season is also available for $19.99. To order, please go to wildharvestfilms.com, Wild Harvest TV Show on Facebook, or Les Stroud's Wild Harvest on YouTube.